So here is a video I'm going to record for some of the lecture of um, class five from uh, spring of 2021, where uh, this is the third uh, lecture in gear basics um, covering chapter 13 out of Shigley. And I'm going to talk about planetary gears and the uh, kinematics um, and uh, forces. Planetary, planetary gear, kinematics, and forces. So let's uh, begin here. Um, planetary gears are very prevalent in, mo in, in modern equipment. Um, in fact, the, the more modern something is, uh, the chances are it'll be a planetary gear. Uh, they have a lot of really desirable traits. Um, for one thing, they're compact. Uh, they could do the speed reduction or actually a speed increase in a really compact uh, um, form uh, and quite often you're able to have the uh, input shaft and the output shaft to be aligned with each other even though that might not be the case in uh, the, the pictures I have over here. What you can see here is a, um, a wind turbine and one of the reasons why you need a planetary gear here is the wind blades go pretty slow but electrical generators really need to go very quite fast uh, to be able to be efficient. Um, so you need, in this case, it's not a speed reduction, but a speed increaser. And that planetary gear is nice because it's nice and compact and can be um, up there. And um, there's all kinds of different configurations uh, that you can have, and they're kind of difficult to read. So uh, just at, at first glance right here, it could be very tough to try to figure out what's going on. So I would highly recommend uh, we don't just jump wade into the deep end there, but let's take a look at simpler planetary gears. Um, one, of the, one of some of the motivation in doing uh, uh, research on planetary gear vibration signal analysis is to prevent catastrophic failures uh, like this picture. And I just kind of like the picture because something blew up. Um, so uh, I have a, several YouTube videos um, up on here. I think this is from Learn Engineering and um, I think I pasted it into the Blackboard. So when you go to uh, notes on class five, uh, it'll be it'll look different. Let's see here. I got to cl click out of that and uh, come into here. So you can see some of these. Uh, like try out these videos. I'm not going to play you a video within a video, but you want to try to check check some of these out right here. You can understand planetary gears. Um, here's like a little utility that's kind of cool. Oh, um, it didn't work. Let's see why didn't that work. Um, I think my link was broken incorrectly. Let me see, it's going to be down in here. Yeah, there's something going on right there. Let me fix my link uh, and pause the video. Okay, so let's see, let's see if it works now. Um, that should be try out some combinations of sun, rings, and gear planets. There you go. So you could try this out yourself. You could like reduce the number of planets. Here's the most simple one where we just have one planet. But we can add in uh, planets around and that can balance out the load, uh, balance out some of the forces, but it can also balance out, be a balancing um, just from dynamically. You know, you, uh, this, this guy right here, he might uh, cause a, uh, a vibration because he's just one sided right there. Um, so it's nice to have a, a balancing act on there. Uh, the number of teeth uh, can affect the size, right? So the pitch has to be the same for uh, the sun, the ring, and the planets. And um, some of the complications, it's actually a, a really good uh, um, trait of planetary gears is they can have different speeds, right? So the most commonly what you'll find in uh, here is that you'll set one of these to be zero. Let's see if I could, uh, it's, it's interacting right here. So let me see, uh, planets and carriers. Oh, here, solve for sun maybe. And if you solve for sun, we could make the ring zero. Let's see if we'll make it zero, it won't let me. Quite most often, I should say most, uh, you know, most often you're going to have one of these uh, be uh, stationary, all right? Now you can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. It gets a little bit confusing um, as part of it, and I'm not sure why I can't control this to make one of them uh, zero, all right? Here you go, one of them zero. This will be the most common thing, right? Is that you would have, well, this is carrier speed. 
Yes, okay, so you can see uh, that the carrier is the, uh, um, is the triangle right here, right? And the carrier can be an input, but here we're gonna just gonna fix it and make it zero, right? So um, the, out, like it, the input might be the sun and the output might be the ring, right? Um, you can uh, change that around. Let's see, okay, so um, it's letting me have all five of them. I think what I need to do is change, uh, solve for the planet and the carrier. And I wanna make the ring is probably the most common one where you would make that zero right there, right? And so what we have here is that the sun is going to be um, the input. Let's say the sun is the input at 17 going on here. And so the carrier is the output. And you can see how slow, uh, um, look at the dot at the sun as an input and you can see how slow the triangle is. So anyway, that is um, a way to, you know, just virtually mess around with this, uh, with this. But let me go through and um, look at some other aspects that I wanted to, um, to point out. All right. Um, hmm. So the other name for this is the epicyclic gear. Um, and you can see that we have um, the uh, number of teeth on the ring right here is 80. The number of teeth on the, um, the this uh, planet right here is 30. And the number of teeth in the sun is 20. Now think about this, that this has to be the same pitch. So and the radius of this sun plus the diameter of this planet must equal the radius of this ring because all of them have to have the same pitch because they're all interfacing with each other. So uh, so the 10 teeth plus the 30 teeth, so this is 40, yes, that must be the radius of the planet. So that's like an important idea. Um, also, I've also mentioned that any of these could be held stationary. Any of the three elements, that would be the carrier, the sun, or the ring, right? The planets are along for the ride, so they're not gonna be, you can almost think of them, when you hold the carrier, you're holding uh, the the, uh, the ring. You're holding you're holding the planets when you're holding uh, the carrier. Um, and when we're gonna calculate for things, like the big, the big idea in terms of numbers right here that you'd want to, uh, to use when calculating it is fairly straightforward, fairly simple. All you want to uh, look for is a train value, right? So we have these uh, planetary train value equation. And that would be E is equal to the last RPM minus the arm RPM, right? which is, we could call that the carrier or the arm and divided by the final RPM minus the arm RPM, okay? And so this is the main equation that we use for calculating things with planetary gears. Um, and so it's equation uh, 1332. And we use it, use with equation 1330, all right? and combine that together. So we already knew um, how, to how to use equation 13, um, let's see, did I say right, 1323, boy, dyslexia, 1332. I said 32 and I wrote 23. So maybe I should start over, uh, it's too late. I'm running out of time in my life. All right, so um, here is equation uh, 1332, that's this. We use this with equation 1330 um, so we could figure out um, you, you f find the train value here, and then based on the input or the output, we can find uh, what the, um, the rest of, of these are gonna be. We're gonna hold one of these zero, um, hold one of these stationary sometimes, maybe the arm, or it could be uh, the final, which is often, often the, maybe it's the ring, and this might be the sun right here, but whatever our configuration is gonna be. So, um, 
let me go through and do some of the introduction of the things before I do any more examples. I had um, some, okay, there's so, I have a whole bunch of demos uh, for this. Perhaps I have too many demos. Um, so it could take up too much class time. So maybe I'll use some of that time uh, right now. So these right here are, I, I made these um, based on this right here. I had this um, Nata Science Automotive uh, Education uh, thing here. So you're gonna open up, and um, they, they were selling these. Uh, I got a quote for them. Uh, they were kind of expensive. Uh, for like 10 of them, they were like 150 bucks or something like that, and I'm like, I could do that. Um, I could I could do much better than that. So uh, what I did is I uh, made 3D models of them and I 3D printed them. Right. So let's see. Here is uh, like maybe the housing for the thing. Here is the ring. Um, um, here's a carrier right here, and I tried to be very colorful. Um, and then I uh, made here are my here are my gears. So uh, so that you can see. See, I'll use all of the same color for the planets right here. So the planets, and I guess I will go with a red for my uh, right. Where'd you go? Can I get them lined up just right? Oh. And I think okay. So my sun here is uh, this guy right here. And I made like um, this little slot right in there. You can see. So I made a clip. And what you can do is when I put this in here, right, that makes that sun stationary. So now you can kind of see, and I put these in the tabs. I have um, that tab, and I should have had this all set up. Wasted time. Let's see. The, the tabs don't matter what color they are, right? But um, so, in for instance, maybe. Um, so I have it geared up somehow so uh, that, I'll call that right there. So this blue is the output and this one, this yellow is the input. And you can watch um, these will rotate at a different rate, right? If you watch one of these circles, you could see that this one is going faster than this. So there's a reduction that's taking place. Um, now instead of fixing the sun right here. I will fix um, by using this as a longer peg uh, right in here. Let's see, I gotta, I gotta find where, uh, is I'm gonna fix the ring. So this is probably the most, uh, okay, now th this one doesn't wanna fit through here. So I can probably just hold uh, the ring in place. Let's see, is it gonna let me, um, now see, I need, to, I need to make that one deeper. I don't know. If I have uh, something I can put through, through there, a toothpick or something. Um, my office hours are wondering if I'm still there. And uh, I am I'm still here, but uh, my office hours are not. Where to go, office hours? Uh, I'm still here. Okay. Cool. Put you back over there. Um, okay, so let's say I hold this steady. Let's keep track of the, um, the carrier right here but I have the sun as the input. And I'm gonna turn it this way right here. You can see that um, this is also a reduction right there, right? So uh, like, like, keep track of this green right here, okay? Right here, that was one revolution. And you can see that it only made like a quarter revolution. Here's another revolution you can see. So you can see that there's a reduction going on right there. Now you can also um, stop, make the carrier uh, fixed. So I got a. There we go. There's my carrier fixed. I put this. This pin is a little longer, and it goes through there. Now I could take the sun, and have that be an input. Now watch what happens here. I'll put this on there so you can see it. You can see it's going in the opposite direction, right? We can we can rotate the ring, and the sun's going the opposite direction. Same thing right here. We can this here. I'm going this clockwise. Okay. This is how reverse is done on an automatic transmission. They change what the input is, and there'll be clutches that can hold the various things in place, whether it be the, something connected to the sun, something connected to the carrier, or something connected to the ring. 
So that makes it really useful. I think this is a, a really good hands-on um, thing, and I have uh, four of them. I could have printed out more. Should make enough for everybody in the class, right? And then I could sanitize them before a class, and uh, we could pass them around, or we could try something out where we uh, pass them. But I, the, 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 my own, inv uh, in, my own in, um, uh, innovation as part of this was to figure out a way to make. Um, Make the center, make, make the uh, the sun right there, make it uh, stationary. And but um, maybe Dr. Tam she will be part of this for her class. Here's another one. I made this off of Thingiverse. Uh, so you know you can see I'm getting use out of my um, various uh, uh, 3D printed. Um, filaments here, different colors. Um, what's really interesting about this, okay, so uh, we could do the calculation, I think I, I tried this in one class, but it took too much time, that this ring had 58 teeth, and I think I wrote down uh, that each of these right here, so you can see that this is multi-stage, you can see that um, if I were to take this apart, which isn't particularly easy to do, being a bear. I have broken one of these before. I'm trying to take them apart. They, they really have some seriously tight tolerances. The, really the hard part here is that these, these gears, they made them kind of in a weird way. I'll show you what I mean by weird if I can get it apart. They made them kind of like these little, almost like a herringbone looking thing right there. They got this, uh, thanks to what they really, they really do um, intersect with each other. Um, I also needed to uh, screw some uh, some of these parts in here. Oh, I also have to take these off right here. So you can see, uh, maybe now now maybe a more practical thing. You can kind of see how um, you could possibly uh, get these to um, th that whole idea of the carrier. And this 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 one is kind of made so that you know with the assumption that the um, Oh, there you go. See, I broke. I had broken one. That's. I remember I broke one of these things apart when trying to get it apart. Um, but uh, let's see. I can get the. Mm. Do I have something in here that's not letting me? I think. It, I think. It, I think all that's really stopping me is the fact that it has that like herringbone uh, kind of uh, piece in there. And you could probably have her video me breaking this thing. We're about to give up. There you go. So I try to get this thing apart. Oh, and there you go. That's the, that's that broken off. Of course, I can just glue it back in place. It's, as long as there's two of them, it's gonna be, it's gonna hold. There you go. So you can see that's that's what was stuck in there is that herringbone pattern, and there's a slight herringbone pattern right in there. Um, so that's that's uh, that's somebody else's. I don't I don't think I've seen gears that actually look like that, but you could kind of uh, get a better sense. And these things are darn stiff right here, right? This is not a very um, this is a very this the tolerances on this thing were almost uh, being kind of a um, interference fit right there. Okay, you can, oh now now you can kind of see it. Yeah, I'm trying to get this thing uh, was to. Uh, to work uh, smoothly was uh, obviously a challenge, but anyway, uh, there you can see these uh, different stages, and we could even take out this part right here, so you could kind of see what a car what the carrier um, is looking like. And I just dropped one of those clips, but now these they kind of run pretty smoothly, but it was like inside uh, this uh, that would that's uh, pr pretty difficult uh, to try to get. And once again, there's some type of like little herringbone thing in there. So I almost kind of wonder if I have it like one of the gears upside down or something. I don't know. Um, now that I think about it. But um, I have other planetary gears uh, to take a look at. Here's a neat one. Um, if you do like just a Google search or even an Amazon search here for a planetary gear, uh, this one will come up right here. This is like a little, this is for like a, a little model kit. 
and um, it's got a little expensive but if you were making like a, a something in robotics uh, this might be a nice little thing to pick up if you had like you wanted a lot of torque out of like a little motor um, because this is a lot of re uh, reduction in a small package uh, right here so you can uh, it be quite effective but you can see what this is what the carrier looks like um, and they can see that there's an input right in there right so we have an input and an output and here's the ring and of course the way it's arranged you can see that the ring is uh, um, intended to be uh, stationary right so there this one this just has two um, two stages as part of it but it has a, a whole lot of reduction uh, where you might have seen in the um, the uh, where, where we had mentioned in dealing with just spur gear stages, we said we couldn't do more than 10 to 1 in a particular, uh, in any particular stage. This can do uh, much more than that. Um, I don't know what I would say what the limits would be, um, but it can do much more in uh, a single stage. Uh, and then lastly, let's see if we can uh, can't get a look at this thing right here. Right. So here is a uh, another planetary gear uh, setup. Um, where you can like hold on to the ring right here or maybe we were uh, this, so this is the carrier right here right so there's the, the carrier as an input and here's the Sun as an input so like we can make the carrier fixed so you can see that the ring and the input are going the opposite direction we can hold on to this and you can see that the, the, uh, the, the, rate, the rate of this I was thinking, considering uh, doing this right here. So let me um, make one line right there and make one line maybe right here. And make one line right here onto this. That helps us kind of give a, a reference for how much um, reduction that we're doing, right? So if we're holding this right here, this is the sun. Go like I, I do. Uh, let's see, let's get this back up in line. Of course, okay, there's there's at the top. There's there at the side. So I'm gonna get this all one rotation. So you go over here to one rotation, right? You can, so you saw that this one rotated multiple times already. Uh, let's see. Let's get them uh, so you can see them. Okay, they're there. They're almost in sync with each other, right? So let's pay attention to this one. We come around. Right, so we're down here at the bottom, and this one has already come up to the side. We come up to here, it comes up to the top. So there's not a lot of reduction in this particular uh, configuration, but that's okay because that it, it, you know by changing which is the input and which is the output. Now you can think of it as more or less like shifting gears in, in, a, in a car and an automatic transmission. That's how this this works. And I encourage you to go to that um, how it works uh, link in my um, right here and how um, how does an automatic transmission work it's a, a pretty interesting video uh, to check out another common planetary gear and this is very very common and they've been around for a long time is a differential right? so a differential allows um, wheels to uh, uh, run at uh, on an axle to run at different speeds so in order to go around a corner uh, with something the inside wheels while you're turning or going around a, a curve they go slower than the outside wheels and if they if you were on a fixed axle it would skip right because uh, um, or to be screeching going on right there because of that like f you couldn't do it like if you had like a little toy that's got just got a, a, an axle that's connecting both wheels together you could try it out you could try to see and one of them has to slip uh, to be able to keep that going but a differential allows this uh, to uh, allows you to have uh, uh, separate speeds going on while still maintaining a um, uh, a, a, a constant input, right? So we have one input that's, that allows for there still to be drive to take place. And if you remember my cousin Vinny, uh, the movie, 
during the climactic scheme and uh, scene in spoiler alert uh, they talk about this particular type of differential called a pause attraction which is more complicated than your standard one which allowed for both tires to be able to peel out as opposed to most differentials one one would peel out while the other wouldn't right so, uh, um, so that's like the, that's like the idea here uh, that like if this one got stuck this one would still be uh, going right there right so this is a differential, and this is a type of planetary gear, but uses bevel gears in order to achieve uh, uh, that uh, um, th this action uh, that's taking place. And there's a differential. Um, I think almost you could say in every car. I think maybe electrical car. Maybe, maybe electric cars, uh, um, they wouldn't necessarily have to have one. Because um, you can put the motors right by, by the wheels. But I think you still would. And, and I'm in a fully electric car. But differentials. And you'll see these in, you know, in the back. And in, in if you look at the back of a truck or whatever and you look underneath, you would see that there's a big bulb. Uh, by the axle right there. That's where the differential is going. And not, sometimes, by the way, you, you actually offset where uh, this input uh, bevel gear is going to be onto the thing, and that allows, allows the shafts to be offset from each other. And it, like I mentioned, there's excellent um, link right in here for learn engineering, how it works, but also this old one. This old video right here is really good to give you kind of a big, bigger idea on how the differential um, is actually taking place. So I think I made a longer video than uh, is necessary. It was 25 minutes long. But I think it gives you kind of a big idea of um, what planetary gears do, um, how they're useful. And um, I, I do encourage you to uh, watch those other videos. Um, you don't have to watch them all the way through. But I think they will give you a better appreciation. So we're going to use the uh, do another um, video where I walk through um, the uh, sample the example problems, so you could see how we were uh, go about using that main equation to try to figure out um, solve a, uh, a a problem. Oh, I do want to um, add in another thing. So. Uh, I probably just psyched people out thinking that the, it was going to be over. Um, there, there, there's so much to cover in a planetary gear. It is a pretty big topic here. Um, there's automatic transmissions, and I can look through. I can talk through this, and this, this is the how it works uh, video right here. It's, um, and here's examples right there. Here is what I wanted to uh, mention out. Uh, something else I wanted to include was the different possible uh, combinations. Um, it's easier to, to to figure out what these are by looking at the different um, videos that are accompany these various um, possible configurations. Uh, for, for this. And uh, um, I go back to one of these earlier ones. You see, it's tough to understand what's taking place here. But if you slowly work through um, these configurations right here, they'll help you to kind of uh, picture what that original was. And this is only showing like one half of the differential gear, right, uh, of, the, of, the, um, uh, of the thing. So let's see. Um, I made way too much of, of this. Well, where is it uh, going to be? Um, right here. Uh, if you go to useful links and resources, and you come down to gears, let's see which it was. The gear design, gear kinematics. I believe it's gear kinematics. You will see that I have um, the Levi's, Levi's. I don't know. Anyway, here's YouTube videos for each of these. So if we go to, um, I think it's going to bring, I think it's going to uh, pop up in this video, maybe. Um, this is the A type right there. So you can go and you can see, and uh, they're going to give me an advertisement, right? No, there you go. So take a look at that video and then compare it to this video. Then take, uh, take a look at B type. So it gives you an idea. These look like virtual Legos, don't they? And I built, uh, I tried to build one out of Legos. Um, I'll show it to you. But let's take one that, um, okay, so let's look at J. J is kind of complicated. Video unavailable, huh? All right, what about K? Did they take K, K unavailable? Video unavailable. Let's say, um, 
Okay, well, let's uh, your you, challenge accepted here, uh, uh, buddy. Uh, let's say um, this and K. There you go. Uh, there's L. All right. Uh huh. Download this model and formats right here. So that's the L. Is my L still not working? There's L at the end. So there you go. There's L. That's what the configuration looks like and compare it to this. All right. Well, well, I'll fix this thing later. Um, there was something else I was going to show. I don't remember what it was now. Hmm. It wasn't. Was it important? Uh, probably not. Yeah. I think you get you get some more out of this um, by looking through these uh, uh, some more. Everything you know know about limited slip differentials, how it's made, gear videos, a lot of other things. So let me go and add this to the uh, collection.